Right, hi guys. So a question I get asked a lot is how I do a bunch of the stuff on my four track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a little talk through rather than sending pictures because then next week someone else will want pictures. Here we go, this is what I've done, right? So back wheel here. I'm running 50 mil spacers. I have been for like two years now. They're fine. There's never been a problem with them. One mess up I did make with them was um, I bought Suzuki Jimny ones because I thought they were all exactly the same um, 50 mil by five by 112, whatever size they are. But the trouble is the thread is different on the Suzuki Jimny wheel nuts to the four track. And by the time I noticed this, I destroyed one of the threads trying to get the thing on. So I had to install these. These are longer threads that I just bought and you have to press them out and press them back in. But it was pretty straightforward once I got around to it. So if you can buy four track ones because they got the right thread size, um, otherwise be prepared to change them yourself. Shock absorbers. I have gone for plus five inch terra firmers. Let's just see if you can see that from where you are. So, Terra firmers, adjustable, forgive my exhaust leak in there. But the thing about them, these are for a Land Rover, they're five inch extendable, but they're pin to pin. So you pin at the top, like the four track shock, pin at the bottom, not like the four track shock. What I did to get around this is if you can see here, all right, so what I've done here is that is the standard four track mounting pin here. Yeah. All I did, I welded a plate across the top here and I drilled a big ass hole in the middle of it. That way, making sure it was gonna line up with the exact hole from the shock absorber there. And I've done that both sides on the trailing arms, obviously, that's how I mounted my shock absorbers. Um, people say you can use Land Rover Discovery front springs as rear springs on the four track and you can because i have but it takes some welding <laughs> see that's what the springs look like um these are land rover ones what i had to do was i had to weld in this bracket because as somebody said the four track springs taper closer to the top and closer to the bottom. Obviously these ones don't. So I had to modify the spring cup, top and bottom. Um, if you can see that, all I've done is I welded a plate onto there with a little ridge in the middle. I'll show you how I did that in a minute. Um, same with this one, forgive the mud. That's what that's supposed to look like, right? Uh, see, I put this in. I welded, a this is actually the mount from the Land Rover. I cut the whole thing off the Land Rover just to be on the safe side. But it's easy enough to make your own. I'm not gonna do it now, but what you wanna do, you get yourself some plate steel, um, thick enough for the job. You wanna cut yourself a nice thin strip of steel like that. Mount it on your steel. This houses the outer of the spring. And then you're going to get yourself a bit of pipe, the right size, you're going to mount it in the middle. You're going to weld that together and then cut it out and fit it, obviously, the right size for the spring. If you can't weld, you can get it manufactured up the right size, give the guy the specifications. However, you're going to need to weld it to the actual truck. So you might have to pay somebody to do that as well. The other thing was <clears throat> I went for two and a half inches of lift from standard on the back here. And I had to cut the spring, but you can't cut the spring. You can't just cut it straight down like that because there's a sharp edge. What you've got to do is find the taper and cut it along that way, a long thin cut, which, um, let's see if you can see that. Where is it? There. Uh, the very top coil on that side. Can you go ahead and see that from there? There you go. Just about to see it from there. So that's the coil I had to cut all the way until it's slimmed down and finished flush. And again, I've done that both sides. That's how I got my lift on the rear. Next, 
I got asked quite a lot how I fitted my winch. So like, I mean, for pulling yourself out um, or pulling somebody out, it's not really worth it. You might as well just hook it to your turret and drive out with a rope. However, I use this for pulling heavy stuff onto the trailers because I've got a bad back. Um, what I did, my winch mounting tray here, I welded an upright to it at the back. And then, let's see if you can see that down there. Get just the right angle. There you go. That piece of steel there is mine. And I drilled into it. Oh, you're not going to be able to see that. That's maybe from down there. Yeah, so I drilled into it four holes and I lined it up with the four holes that hold the turret on, that hold the tow bar on, obviously. And um, I took those bolts out and I bolted that in first. And then I got my winch bolted in afterwards. But um, so this is just my new bracket here. The winch bolts in from top to bottom like that. But the main strength of the only strength of it is held by the big four massive bolts that hold the whole turn bar on i had to trim the bumper just a little bit i bought the smallest winch i could because i wanted it to just tuck in to this little gap i didn't well i'm gonna rip the bumper off because i hate it and change it eventually but that's a job for another day wiring got my wires they tuck up under there they run up just about see it through there and i've got it because i haven't gone through the body yet in a Anderson plug into the bumper inside that's my other connection so quite simply pull that out pop it into there and winch is live but there's, there's better ways of doing it there's cleaner ways to do it like without this if I wanted to just run my wire straight through the floor but it's a bit of a job I'll get around to that again someday okay one thing a lot of people have trouble with is the alternator conversion. Now let's see if I can talk you through this while it's still attached to my car. Oh, you've got a pretty poor lighting now, haven't you? Okay, so this is the alternator. I went for one from a 1.8 Vauxhall Astra, actually, was the one I went for. The things you have to do so that is a standard four track pulley on the end of the alternator. That's the one off my old alternator because it's got the, the spacing at the back and it's got the correct V for the belt. But what you've got to do is you've got to shim it out because it doesn't quite fit properly. It, the, so the shaft that comes out the alternator is a little bit sh small, narrow in diameter compared to the hole that's in the pulley. So people use different methods. I used a piece of copper pipe. I put it in there, tapped it in, and it fitted absolutely perfectly. So it gave me, took up all the slack I needed. Um, that was pretty straightforward. One of the jobs I did have to do, you have to extend the tensioner here. And obviously because you can't have a four track without a welder, I made my own. I extended it. I took two, you can see the weld in the middle there and I welded one together on the end of the other one and extended it to give me the, uh, the length I needed for it. The wiring at the back, let's see what you can see. All I did was, they only need the main wire and the signal wire. So that's my main wire underneath there. Um, that's pretty obvious where that goes. And these are the two, oh God, where are we? There you go. These are the two that I fitted and they are the signal wires that run into the loom there. That's the standard four track loom that goes to the alternator, but it's the blue wire and the brown wire. See that? Those two there. They're the ones I used. That's the ones you have to use. And that is the correct way around for them to plumb into the plug from behind here. Um, I feel like you can see more than I can. There you go. Okay, so that is what the back of the alternator looks like. That's what the plug looks like. I just did it on the top bottom two spade terminals, and it's the brown and blue wire that pushes onto them. Just putting a female spade terminal onto them, it's pretty straightforward. Now, the snorkel. 
Safari snorkels. This is one from Alandra of Discovery. Yes. Um, do they fit? Well, I don't know. You tell me. So take heed when you cut your hole here because I messed up the first time and now I've got a massive hole in my truck. But it's all right. We'll, uh, we'll deal with that. I'll show you the fitment of it first. See, that annoys me quite a lot. The fact that it's like, what, finger width down there. And you can just about see through it at the other end. But that is your best bet. You see at the bottom there, it doesn't quite fit on the ridge of the arch. Um, I mean, I'm being pedantic here, but I would have tried to, that's, that's the best I could get it to fit. And I did try for quite some time. I mean, from a distance, you wouldn't notice it. You think it looks all right. I think it looks fine. The other three bolts, I made a bracket here um, and I just self tapped it into the, the sill here. But I mean, that's the little gap there, you see. Doesn't look too bad. I go backwards. I don't know, there's some debate which way is cooler, backwards or forwards. Um, but what you have to do, if you, I mean, that's all good just sticking it to the truck, but if you want it to actually work, what I did, one second, and we're back. This is what I did, right? So you've got to pipe it into your airbox, that much is obvious. You need a three inch pipe. I actually used an old shell that I found from a tank firing range. Um, yeah, yeah, my sealant's a little bit naff. The thing I did, I swapped this box around. I, uh, I took it and I flipped it. You see that one's null and void now, but it's held by this one here, which I welded onto it. Um, I did that because I needed the space this side to put my three inch pipe into, and I wanted it to work. The diff difficulty is, so this is how you open it, obviously, but this is how the, uh, the air goes to the engine. And they're opposite ways round, so I had to cut the edges, the ends off both of them, all the way down, you see my bad sealing job there. So like, you might be able to see that. Welded all the way around, um, in order to get me this end, that end, and uh, the air wind at this end flip round to that. But that's the way you have to do it if you want your snorkel to actually work. The sealant there is just because I went off-roading the other day and I didn't want to drown anything. Not that you can drown these things. Um, other extras. That is a intercooler from a Land Rover TD5. You see, I've got it so that it's just behind the grill there. It's a snug fit, but I feel huge performance gains. Well, huge, I say huge. It feels a lot healthier, the engine. It feels like it breathes a lot better. But because rather than the standard four track one um, goes pipe in and pipe out on this side, the passenger side, um, the TD5 one is end to end. So what I had to do was from this end, I had to buy a bunch of pipe and run it through there through the middle and back up to my inlet manifold there. But um, I mean, that's up to you if you want to do that. That's, uh, but I, I, I liked it. I, I'd like to get a higher flow one one day because I feel like it'll just make that little bit of improvement. Um, other mods, what have I done? So this is called an Anderson plug. Forgive it, it's missing teeth a bit like me. Um, what it does, it plugs straight into my jump leads. And you see, I've got it wired up one to an earth there and the other one to the live over there. Um, that basically gives me the ability to jumpstart anything, anywhere, at any time. It's um, linked straight to my battery. All I have to do is plug it in. I don't even have to faff around by lifting the bonnet up. So that's super handy. This, all of this stuff over here, that's to do with the headlights. Um, they were complicated. You see, I've got the aftermarket LED headlights there. Plugging them in and making them work, that was easy enough. But getting the full beam to work was the hard one. I'll talk you through that in a minute. Um, aside from that, I've got a custom bumper. That was just something that I did myself. The 
The other question I get asked all the time is, how did I fit my seat? So we're going to have a look. You see, I've got the RX-8 cloth seats in here. They are absolutely lovely, brilliant seats. How did I fit them? Well, it wasn't wizardry, it was welding. Um, so I used the standard four track base because it's just easier. It bolts into all the, all the holes, factory holes, and it's high enough. It gets above all that stuff underneath. So what I did, um, it unbolts from there, from your rails, from your actual standard seat, it unbolts. So I unbolted it through the standard seats away. Now these seats, I don't know if you can see that, they're quite a bit wider than the original seat was. So I had to use this bar here, which I welded onto underneath there, and I welded onto underneath there. So I literally, I welded this bar to the seat. Um, you see on the edge here, I had to space the back up with this little spacer, just because it was a funny angle. No, roll it forward. You see, back here, same same thing. I've uh, I've spaced this from there, and I've just run a piece of inch box from side to side. Then I welded it in the middle to the standard seat frame. Pretty straightforward. Oh. That's my leisure battery. I mean, you don't need me to tell you how to fit a leisure battery. You can Google that. And I think that is us. Yeah, so the only other stuff I've done is an aftermarket gear stick, because I like it, and a Momo steering wheel, because it's much easier to turn on the, the small one. I do have, have fitted a... Um, uh, EGT, exhaust gas temperature sensor, but my bad, I bought a cheap Chinese one and it never worked, but this is how I fitted it, look. So that's my sensor, um, lost my torch. I had to tap that, you will have to tap that into the exhaust manifold somewhere, wherever floats your boat. Um, I did it there, I think that's the blank off for where the EGR would go in a later engine, but um, yeah, I didn't need it. So I drilled through with a 9mm drill bit, I believe, and then I tapped it so that the thread would fit. I just got the corresponding tap to the thread on the standard one. But yeah, did all that work, and the bloody thing doesn't work. So I have to buy a new one. Shame. Anyway, that's what I've done to my truck. Like bar, you can Google. Um, in fact, you can check my other video to see just how effective a 1,000 watt light bar is at night time. But um, I hope you learned something. I'll yeah, I walk you through them headlights because they're a pain in the ass. But um, yeah, if you want to do anything similar like this to your truck, that's pretty much how it is. You, you need a welder. But, I mean, if you've owned one of these trucks, you know you need a welder just to keep the bloody thing on the road. But um, oh, I love it. I love my beast. Okay, cool. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Thanks, guys.